Hello, I'm Richard Walsh. I play fireman Bert Quigley, sick note in London's Burning. George, knock off the hose and release the pressure. You got mad, like no water. Hi, I'm Zoe Hayes. I play the role of Carol Webb, the sub-officer in London's Burning. Jack, what are you doing? I'm Clive Wood and I play Jack Morgan in London's Burning. As actors, we've fearlessly fought hundreds of fires over the years. Look out! But acting brave isn't the same as having to be brave for a living. Well, tonight we get the chance, as the London Fire Brigade invite us to play it for real. Your bright idea, was it? Well, don't look at me, it certainly wasn't mine. Blackwall Fire Station in South London. Jack, come on! Possibly the most famous station in the country. It's real enough, still operational in fact, but we're not. We're a cast and crew who are expert in make-believe, who've assembled once more to film the 10th series of London's Burning. What's it doing here? And why are you two fighting? But oh, really, you better come up to the office and explain it. I'll talk to you later. This drama has brought the hitherto hidden domain of the firefighter into the open. But how much does what we do as actors really reflect what they do? <laughs> to find out, three of us, Clive Wood, Zoe Hayes and myself, Richard Walsh, have set ourselves the task of covering a night shift at two London fire stations, Old Kent Road and Peckham, to get a taste of the real thing. Red Watch, like all watches, work together for years on end. We will have just one night to get to know a whole new cast of characters. Red Watch, Red Watch, Red Watch, Red. Leading firefighter Scrivener, Echo 35, Old Kent Road, on the Red Watch. Fire East. Firefighter Kel Ward, otherwise known as Meg, Echo 35, Old Kent Road, Red Watch. I've got your whistles, your action cards. Firefighter Nickerson, Echo 35, Old Kent Road, Red Watch. As far as the cameras are concerned, and I'm concerned, you're working as an ordinary routine tonight, all right? Station Officer Terry Jones, Echo 35, Old Kent Road, Red Watch. Red Watch, Red Watch, out. <laughs> we are. Staying at a fire station feels like walking on the set of a long-running series for the first time. Everyone knows each other's foibles, but you're the new kid on the block. Evening, fellas. Hi, yeah. Hello. Richard Walsh. Dave nice Whiting, man. Station Commander of Peckham. Nice to meet you, Dave. Leading Fireman. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm with you tonight, I believe. You certainly are. Yes, yeah, we've got to get on back to the pump tonight. OK. So if you go to shout now, this went out to a shout, would you be on this? If yeah, you, I'd, I'd on the pressure. Be, be, be in the driver, yeah, I'll be the, uh, right. the, the pump operator. Right. And then, uh, so that, that is my job, basically, to provide for the, for the crews. This is, this is called your personal line. This is, uh, you've got to make sure they're stowed correctly. I see. This basically is what we connect onto each other when we go into a fire. So we keep in contact with each other all of the so time. There's always a reach and there's always, always a connection. You're always in connection with somebody, mm -hmm. yeah. Almost immediately, a message came over the teleprinter that a bonfire was out of control in Peckham. Stuart putting his helmet on first. I remember that's one of the first things they told us when we started training for London's Burning. You've got to get your helmet on first. You can't just smash your head when you're going along at any sort of speed. Especially when you've got speed The good thing about this job is you come in here and you don't know what's going to happen. Go on, switch the camera around there, Pat. You can see it out of this window coming up. There you go. Apparently, this is a typical kind of call from anxious neighbours who are worried that the fire will get out of hand. 
Looks very well managed. I'm no expert, but it's right out there in the middle. Plenty of grown-ups around. And tonight we'll leave it alone. No, no we'll let you carry on with it. Go One shout could be something boring as far as we are concerned, like a person locked out or a person shut in lift, which is something that we do a lot. And yet you could come back from that and five minutes later you're at a multiple, you know, a multiple accident or a bomb incident or, or something that's challenging. <laughs> When I first jumped into the appliance, which is the fire engine, my adrenaline was just every which way. It's racing down the road, and you're trying to get dressed, and you're, like, falling all over yourself. And I was thinking, gosh, you know, I shouldn't be in here. I shouldn't be in here. There was excitement as well as fear, both at the same time. I think you'd better save your adrenaline for later, Zoe. It's a phantom fire. Evidently, the person who made the call was a bit... Uh, tipsy. ..either distressed or tipsy, I don't know, but uh, they haven't really given specific directions where this uh, smoke issuing is. So, uh, I, don't I guess we can stand here and wait. I don't know where the psychological part. I can smell smoke. Yeah, well, we can smell it as we were driving up, but uh, can't spot anything. No. Basically, we've been given a call. There's no such address as we've had on the slip. So we're carrying out a search uh, around Avondale Square. I'm going to send the other machine off to search down off of Cooper's Road now, try and cover all eventualities. Each watch has its own, obviously, mess cupboard, denoted by the colours on the doors of what watch is what. Red watch are on tonight. This is our cupboard. So you haven't got the keys to the other covers, then? Usually a woman in here. Look at that. Right? Any Italian would be glad to see that. Yeah. The fire brigade does centre around the comedy, if you like. You know, the bantering, digging. Having a dig, done it, having a go. Sarcasm. Sarcasm. Um, you know, you're not safe. Plenty of that floor, yeah. Was so. there nothing in the sun? <laughs> yes, there was something in the sun. It's about my flaming personality. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Bush will write him. Why do you, so, why, why do you think all that arises, all that banter? Where do you think it comes from? Probably being, being together for so long. Yeah. You've got to have a relief point. Um, and that release is banter. I had to get her back, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Mags. Yeah. Oh, Don't mate. worry, I'll get you back. I dare say you will, dear. <laughs> you get someone come out of, of a building site that would just come into a job like this, they find it very hard, not the fire side of it, but the banter, they find that very hard to accept. Speaking to them, none of them are, were sort of like into, you know, going to a counsellor, no, no. We cancel ourselves. That's what all the banter is, all the jokes, all the... And you have to have an element of um, humour, really, to enable to cope with the stresses that are involved in being a firefighter. You realise they're talking about this now. This is burnt now. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, but that's the way we always have it. <laughs> yeah, but they used We to like that. it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The humour was very similar between actors and the firefighters, I think, we, because of the world we live in. I haven't got one in there. are there. hours where we spend doing nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing, waiting for set-ups. It's the same at the station. I mean, the lack of activity was amazing. Hello. Are you locked out? Responding to a lockout was, until April, the staple activity of the fire brigade, now people will have to call a private locksmith, unless there's a real danger of fire. Oh, this is going to be funny if we get shot in the lift. It is, isn't it? OK. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of qualities that you have to have as a firefighter to, to be a good one anyway. You've got to be able to push yourself to the limit and then still find that little bit extra. You may be feeling totally tired and not feel like you can go on, but there's somebody in that room, that building, 
that you have to get it out because no one else, there's no one else really to do it. You are there to do that. And, and if you just sort of gave up at the limit you thought you, you were at, just people would die. So there's that little bit extra that's in you to sort of just push yourself to get them out. And I think to be a good firefighter, you've got to have that, otherwise there's no point in you being here. Hang on a minute. It was never meant to be like this. I thought we'd have a cup of tea, a bit of a chat, then bed. This is busier than London's burning. Any rubbish fires? Yeah. We just pump out. Bins alight, apparently. Take and right, is that? A bin alight in South London. Deja vu. Might have a go on the hose if it's nothing too complicated. There it is, Doug. There's no sign of fire, though, is there? Not a lot. It's a Mickey Mouse, isn't it? What? Better not be. Missed me breakfast for this. Shut up. They're getting me to work now. Couldn't happen two hours later, could it? Oh, no, let's get Blue Watch out again. They haven't done much. Shut up. Well, I've never done this for real before. Down the bag, just open up slowly. Just hold it down into it. Right in. Yeah. Close it no stuntman, no safety coordinator. Just me and my watch on the front line of firefighting. OK, so it's not exactly Steve McQueen in Towering Inferno, but you never know. Maybe we just save Peckham from going up in smoke. Home of the heroes. I've got to have a lie down after that, I'm telling you. London's Burning has always tried to include characters that are true to life. I think the best character, personally, for me is... Um, well, there's a couple, but the, the ones I like are um, Jack. Jack is uh, he's very much his own man. He's very maverick in the way he deals with, uh, with, deals with situations. And also sick note. I want my youth back, Gene. I want my youth back. He started off being this lead swinger, accident prone, and not even minding the accidents because it got him on light duty, it's got him sitting in the watch room, things like that. Uh, he's developed since then into sort of being the pompous ass around the station, I suppose. I mean, look at it, it's gone. It's nearly all gone. He thinks he might get a, a wig and see if he could get away with it at work. And of course, everybody on, on, on the watch knows immediately that he's got a, a syrup on, but nobody notices. They all pretend that absolutely nothing has changed whatsoever. It's going to be a bit short on syrup, Max. George, if you're looking for something... Should be enough, though. I'll tell you, it's got a good place. Yeah. Because I, I think they're two people that you can sort of see within the fire service, you know? Yeah. You need yeah. that rough, gruff attitude in Jack, and you also need the emotional, sentimental part of sick note. But women have yet to make an impact. There are still only 60 female firefighters out of nearly 6,000 in London. We try to reflect that. Oh, I'm sorry, I, uh... It's OK. When I joined, I was the only female amongst all these males. And, um, it, it's, it's quite... It's quite... It was quite daunting. I think you have to have a certain personality uh, in that you've got to be able to take the ribbon, be a man, you know, and give it back, give back what you get. I'll have you cleaning every bit of equipment we've got, OK? You want to play the juvenile, then do it on your own time, not mine. I found, when speaking to Donna, she said almost the same. She went in there, and on the onset, she decided, I'm coming in here now, and I've got to be one of the boys. And she stands up verbally, you know, within her own right. And she's one of them. She can give just as much as she gets. There's a bit of an incident, I think, Everyone was sort of joking about on the, on my, the other firefighters. One of them, um, just, I think he said something and then sort of gave me a little slap around the face, just in jest sort of thing. And I was like, oh, sort of quite taken aback. But I didn't really take anything sort of lying down, so I sort of thought, I'm going to get him back. But my governor said, oh, Donna, you, you know, feel free, you can get, 
sort of getting back now? And I said, oh, no, I'll leave it till later, you know, thinking, I can't do it. I'm an officer. This is my station officer here. But he said, no, no, Donna, go ahead. You know, we all want to see it. So I sort of turned to him and sort of gave him a quick right hook on the jaw. And I think he stumbled a bit and was quite taken aback by the fact that I had it in me to do that. All quiet on the Peckham front. Let's hope it stays that way while we eat. We are the busiest fire station in the world. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a nuclear explosion, you can bet it's going to happen in Blackwall. No one would live there, would they? No, no there wouldn't <laughs> be anyone left to live there, no. I think. <laughs> Green and Common, when we, we did something down there, big uh, garage place, and they just went down to Green and Common, which is deserted now, and built it. The props boys just built that garage. <laughs> People don't, or often don't realise you know, how clever the, the art department, the scenic design people are on London's burning. They think we found these locations and, and burnt them down, but we haven't. Those guys have actually been down there and built it, and then we burnt it down. Mm. Bulk foam tender required. Let it go! When you're sitting around the telly, you, your kids will ask you, do you do that, Dad? And I'll say no, sure. because it's, it's not like that. <laughs> start saying, shut up, Dad, when you say it's not like this, it's not like that, <laughs> <laughs> you know. You shut up, big. Dad, we're trying to watch the telly sort of thing, you know. You did your own, uh, first pet of training at Southwark Training Centre. Yeah. You did that a few years ago. Do you do any yeah, you more ten. training? We do uh, a refresher every year, two or three days before the start of a series. It's basically in case they've got some new equipment we haven't used. And it would have to be in January, wouldn't it? That's when you'll find us crawling through the bowels of Southwark Training Centre, carrying the air we breathe on our backs. The idea is to see if we're strong enough to make it through real sewers, should the occasion ever arise. When I went to training, it was, I knew it was going to be bad and hard, but I don't think anything, anything can prepare you for just how hard it's going to be, both physically and mentally. The stress is enormous. That was incredibly uncomfortable. Next stop, the most dreary basement flat in London, and a victim in an armchair. We'll have to find him in total darkness. You have a basement which is a few rooms. It's supposed to represent um, a typical sort of domestic sort of house. Our only visual aid is a thermal image camera, which responds to body heat. Okay, thank you. Sweep to the right. Right. Okay, into the room. Okay, following, following. Aha! We found someone. Yeah. We found him. That's a shout. I'm right behind you. <laughs> There's no time for that, officer. Oh, he's a bit heavy for us. He is very heavy. Yeah. All right, I think he can walk. He's conscious. Oh, good. Excuse me, but you're conscious now. Have you done any conscious acting ever? Oh, oh. that's all right now. Oh. And you come out of there okay. and you've missed about four people, which you don't take seriously to begin with, but towards the end of the training you realise that these aren't just dummies, they could be people, and that's four people you've left in a fire. And the stress of that, you know, the responsibility of what you're actually being asked to do is quite tremendous. Our last exercise will take place in the foam tower. Yes, they will fill the whole thing with foam, and then we have to climb down it. The experience simulates walking through dense smoke, which can be totally disorientating. He's on a pre-wash. <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> Firefighters say that when you can't see, the smallest room can feel as big as a cathedral. This is weird! I know. <laughs> Richard, come back round behind, darling. Clive, yeah. if you do the same to Richard, stick your hand on the top of his cylinder. Which is, Richard? Which is... Hang on. All right, Zoe, this is the door we're going out, all right? Yeah. When you're inside there, you think stuff is two feet away, but it might as well be two miles away. You, you have, 
all sense of distance is completely lost to you. I was really frightened at first because uh, it's like the unknown. What I didn't like about it was stepping down into it. And you really can't, somebody like Kai could be right in my face and you just could not um, actually see him. It's very and alive, it, isn't it? It is very alive and you're trying to wipe off the foam, thinking that it might help you, but it actually doesn't. You're not a good thing for claustrophobic, it's not recommended at all. I really enjoyed it, actually. So did I. I just stood there till someone sort of prodded me and said, move. But it was like well, being back in the womb. <laughs> The front womb or the back room? <laughs> <laughs> the bed womb. <laughs> back on the watch, and we're wondering if tonight is going to turn into the proverbial graveyard shift. We're still waiting for the big one. He's here, girls. Superman's a liar. We're out his times. Many of our storylines come from real events. Come on, dear. I'll give you a hand. Oh, careful now. Oh, oh. 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 shaky. Can you see anything yet? So we were called to uh, a lady with her foot stuck in the bath, and uh, basically what she'd done, I think she'd been lying in the bath like everyone does, and she'd been playing around in there and stuck her foot in the tap. And I don't know how she'd done it, but it got stuck, and they couldn't get it out. Her and her husband couldn't get it out. She was only a young girl. And uh, they called us out, and of course, uh, the, the fire brigade, to, to any person trapped for whatever reason, it's uh, two fire engines and a fire rescue unit. So this poor woman was lying in the bath uh, with absolutely no clothes on at all, and her husband, you know, embarrassedly opened the door to uh, 14 firemen, and up we all went in, into uh, the bathroom, and uh, we had to, <laughs> she was lying there, stark as... I mean, she'd had a towel put over her, but uh, the water was still in the bath. And uh, I don't think she forgot it for a while, but uh, we were there for about 10 minutes wiggling it out. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have called her, to be honest. I would have... Uh, I think I would have uh, got the old fairy liquid out and tried it myself, because that's all we did in the end. <laughs> One thing which separates firefighting from other careers is that you have to get used to sleeping in a dormitory. I wonder who will be next to me tonight and who snores. Bob? Like being the only girl on the watch, um, I suppose, especially for night duty when you're on nights. So obviously, we've only got the one dorm here with some officers' rooms downstairs, so I have to sleep along with all the rest of them. But our locker room is sort of set out so that everyone can have quite a bit of privacy, really. So I'm not the only one who has the privacy. Well, it is very hard to have nine people in one room and try to gain some privacy. So what was it like for you, talking privacy? What was it like for you, you know, coming in the first time <laughs> to a dormitory? Well, I, see, I, I mean, I was used to it because I was in the army for three years before this. Mm. So, I mean, it didn't really mean nothing to me. To, to walk into a room full of fellas. I slept with um, two brothers when I was younger as well, mm. so, you know, was, I'd always shared a room with someone. They say some blokes can get a little bit embarrassed about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is why I sleep downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you slept downstairs because you snore too much. Yeah, I snore, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I make deep breathing sounds. <sighs> They actually look a lot. It's usually the way that we, <laughs> most people, decide to. <laughs> like you say, Max, in your dreams, yeah. in your dreams. Yeah, yeah, that's what my wife no, but says. They're actually. <laughs> but I quite like being in one room, knowing that when there's a shout, you're all getting up together, and you're all, you know, you can look out if someone's not been able to wake up. You can sort of tap them on the shoulder, and which is better than if you're isolated in a separate room. And that just didn't feel comfortable going into this dorm filled with strange people and the majority of them being male except for one which was female and she ended up in the kitchen with me and we were just talking all night so what was it like you know coming into the dorm at first did you get undressed when you went to bed did you oh no the first night I just slept with well, I don't sleep very well here, but no. I just went to bed with everything on because I didn't. Because I, I, I just lay there waiting for the bells because you, you're scared to go to sleep in case you don't wake yeah. up or something. And then, like, as the tour went on, like, socks came off because they were most uncomfortable. <laughs> and then the trousers came off, and now I just sleep in my underwear. Would you believe it? On the night we filmed, 15 miles away, half of Il Pai Island, two minutes from where I live, went up in smoke in one of the biggest fires of the year. Probably the only time we'd go on it is if it carried on for a few hours and we'd get a relief. Yeah. We wouldn't get called on to it as such. Mm. We'd probably so get relief like initial, initial six o'clock in the morning. 
Meanwhile, over at Peckham, there's no peace for the wicked. So I just dozed off when we were called to an estate where someone was stuck in a lift. Somebody's been partying. Someone's stuck in a lift. There's a press emergency button. Apparently they don't get stuck now and again. My name's Mark West, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you've got to watch out this day, Mark. When you see the tell you, Mark. Mark, 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 Who would have thought that in the early hours of the morning I'd be taking part in an impromptu photo call? I never did want to do it. You know. I'm perfectly happy with acting it. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't want to do it. I really wouldn't. It takes a very sort of special sort of person. You've got to be sort of, I don't know, half solitary, half teamwork, half... and uh, brave, very brave. It was a long night, and I mean, not a great deal happened. I think you know, we kind of feel like we feel like disappointed, but in some ways, it's good that nothing happened. Of course, it's good that nothing happened. But I think everyone was pretty amazed that it was so quiet, um, and that was uh, quite an exceptional thing. I think it's a very busy station here normally. I'm still exhausted after <laughs> about an hour's sleep. Um, you know, I'm not used to sleeping in somewhere like this. It's just this little bunk here, and it's. Been uncomfortable, really. I miss my bed. That's uh, the alarm for breakfast, I think. No. Oh no, is there another message on the um, tele message printer? That's what it is. Oh, sorry. I'm knackered. <laughs> so, yeah, it was an education. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Same to you. Yeah. <laughs> Action! Now it's our turn to play host and invite Redwatch to see what we get up to behind the scenes. This is going to be one of the biggest shouts of the series. What will Redwatch make of it? So when are and you actually going to start then? Ten minutes, we've been told. Oh, right. But obviously, they try and knock the stunts off before they knock us off. It's easier to sort of fit us in, if you see what I mean. So you, you come up this way onto the platform and... I don't know, you just do what we're told, really. Yeah. Sit in the big red thing and drive it. <laughs> That's the same as us, then. The fire looks real enough, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. Why is that door open? Because they're going to come running out of it, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have thought the public would have been panicking more than that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Running up and down, banging on the He's windows, trying to sort of smash yeah. the windows and screaming and... You know, if that was for real, that'd, that's how I... Yeah. This is it would be. Yeah. Too calm, yeah. 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 That's what I mean, I would have thought you would have worked out what this geezer in the orange suit's trying to do. He just looks at the door, doesn't he? Well, he's yeah. British yeah. railman, that's all they ever do, isn't he? He just landed yeah. 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 Trying to rescue yeah. the sandwiches. That's it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get them pork pies out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at me, everybody, please. Just I just enjoyed their company. I just think they were just they're just an amazing bunch of guys. I'm totally, totally in awe of um, firefighters. I used to be in awe of actors, but not anymore. <laughs> I think it is the firefighters. Can I 
staan. Ik ga vlag te staan. We don't class ourselves as heroes. Uh, it is a job. Um, it is a dangerous job sometimes. Uh, I mean, who else runs into a fire when everybody else is running away from it? <laughs> <laughs> Madness. Letting a film crew in a place like that. Whoever gave him permission should be prosecuted. We roll. <laughs> <laughs>